Mewn i'n bendawd ydw i a i anter am chair mewn i hafi angi timeline ond yn dweud yn y tas that you can set? Not personally. Um, I'll stay on as long as required. But the priority is to get a chief executive. Um, we're working on that right away. Um, but I can stay on sort of indefinitely. I'm expecting a few months and a chairman would come in too. In terms of the, uh, the chief executive, one of the criticisms of the club has been that whether it's been the last couple of chairmen or the last couple of chief execs, they haven't really had that kind of um, almost barnstorming aspect to communications that a large football club needs for that. Would large in your thoughts? As a barnstormer or as a chairman? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I the recruitment in any walk of life, guys, you know, is it's, it's of the moment. The person we need needs to have multifaceted. The person needs to be good at everything. Um, but it needs to be an assertive character. And we're looking much more to support the CEO with the, with the, the chairman um, and also that the CEO would have a lot of uh, power day to day, the chairman would be slightly behind that. David, please. John, there's been a, a lot of talk about what's went wrong at the club, and we haven't heard a lot about what's going to happen to fix it. Yeah. What, what is your plan to take us forward over the next few months? The, the the, there is a plan. Uh, I'm here to bring stability to that and, and enforcement of that plan. Um, we've been distracted terribly by having to play at Hamden for a few months. Um, and a lot of people forget that the original objective here was to create a great facility for our disabled supporters. It wasn't a renovation, it wasn't a reconstruction. That was the objective. Unfortunately, the timing was wrong. Uh, we got that part of it wrong, and, it's, and it, we had to go to Hamden. But uh, the position in place, managers in place, January will be January, and we're ready to keep going. You know, We see some fruits uh, the labour now with some of the young players that are coming through and that were signed. So I'm just here to bring stability and help recruit the CEO. Is there a recognition then from the board that there have been a lot of bad decisions over the last three years and that has led to the situation being as it is? Um, yeah, yeah it, it, well, decisions are made, good, bad, and then things evolve from the decisions that are made, and uh, that, that's it's only fair to say, yeah, we are where we are, but a lot of great things happen too. So. On a personal level, John, how do you feel about being the chairman right now? Oh, really pleased, honoured. Um, Mrs Gilligan is not too happy with me, not too, too much, but I'm <laughs> no, I'm honoured and it's a privilege and I'm delighted to come in and, uh, after John had to step away because he's a personal friend and uh, I know that I can uh, help. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a joy to be able to help, it's, yeah, very much so. And, you know, uh, I wear two hats, I'm a supporter and, and I'm a chairman, but now I'm the chairman, you know, I have to take the supporter hat off and focus on doing the job. That's difficult, uh, but it's essential. Uh, at three o'clock uh, on the Saturday or whatever time we are, I can be the supporter for an hour and a half. But the responsibility of the chairman is to run the club properly and, and support everybody. Alan? John, you've seen Dave Gaines' comments said a, a number of times, one of which is he'd like to return as chairman. What's your view on that? <laughs> um, uh, well, Dave's a major shareholder and we can say whatever he wishes to say. Um, my view is it's a wee bit unrealistic um, because I mean, Dave's a real businessman. He knows how shareholdings work and he's a 15% shareholder. The other directors are 10, 12, 13% shareholders. It's unrealistic, you know. He said that the club should call an EGM to determine who should be the next chairman. Well, again, it's a wee bit... It's a wee bit unrealistic because EGMs are invariably called by people who wish to change something. So the current board don't wish to change. So why would we call an EGM? One of the other things that singled out, sorry, John, was the need for investment, fresh investment in the club. He reckons up to 50 million quid is needed. Is there any indication of fresh investment coming into the club? There is fresh investment coming in, come into the club, but in fairness, Dave's talking about fresh investment, but he doesn't want to invest, so... I'm not quite sure where, where it means it's going to, the investment is going to come from. But you're Sorry. saying there will be investment, John? Yeah, there will be. John, uh, Dave King's characterisation of the club across various media outlets last week, the club is a crisis, no leadership. Do you recognise that characterisation or do you think he's got it wrong? I think he got it wrong. In, in what sense? I think it's unfair, you know, you're sitting... Uh, what exactly is he saying is not good? What exactly is he saying is going wrong? Give us a plan and tell me 
if, if David had some terrific plan to tell me where we're all going wrong, then we would read that plan and we would consider it. Has, has he reached out to you or any any uh, of the board, or is this all done purely through uh, public? No, I haven't spoken to Dave. Dave. Dave gave me one of the happiest days of my life when he asked me to join him uh, 10 years ago, and I'll never forget it, never forget it. Since then, I've met him, played golf, and socialised when he's over. Um, but I haven't heard from him, no. <coughs> Well, it's just, it's almost ridiculous to compare it. It's, it made me cry rather than laugh, but <laughs> I mean, 15 years ago, you cannot describe how low we were and what we inherited in terms of all sorts of aspects of the club. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, it's unrecognisable since that day. And uh, this is, listen, every day at Rangers Football Club is a challenge. The uh, level of expectancy is enormous, and as a fan, I'm part of that problem. But no, it's un uh, just ridiculous to compare it. Doesn't even begin to compare. And And history tells you that happens. Sometimes uh, we're ahead. Sometimes uh, Celtic are ahead. At the moment, we're chasing. There's, there's no argument there. Why would I? I'm not stupid enough to say otherwise. But we keep chasing. We'll be there. Their, their financial advantages, John, are really powerful at the moment. But you know, their accounts came out last week. Is, is that a gap that can be bridged? Or well, play, player trading is the biggest success and qualification for the Champions League. It's a kind of catch-22, you know. Player trading gets you income, Champions League gets you income when you fail to get it. It's, it's difficult because Scottish football's level of support, uh, TV sponsorship, etc., you just can't compare it to England. So it's always a challenge, of course it is, but it's all about squad and bringing in players and winning your matches and, and moving forward. John, um, in terms of I think it's only destabilising if the people who are the major shareholders and operating the business don't have a plan and uh, we don't have people in place to execute it. We have had some difficulties recently with the stadium and things, but destabilising, no, not particularly. Um, Dave's entitled to say what he wants, it's a free world, but I don't feel destabilised at all, no. You mentioned the investment is coming. I wonder if you've got any more details on that in terms of when, where it might be coming. Well, what I was meaning was when someone asked the question of demand about investment, is that the current investors have uh, invested considerably over the years and are willing to do so again. Uh, we are open to anyone who come, approaches us on investment, as you would be. Um, we get approaches from all over the world from various sources, but it has to be the right people, it has to be the right conditions, it has to be for the right amount of share. Uh, we don't want one person owning the club. Just picking up slightly for me, uh, just picking up on what Raman said, that, that Dave King said 50 million he thinks would be needed to bridge the gap. How much do you think would be needed to bridge the gap and how big do you think that gap is, John? I don't think you can put a number on it. I, I think uh, you, the, the gap at the moment is considerable. That uh, you just have to win your games, get back back challenging for the for the top spot, and uh, and then if we get into the, the level of Europe that we hope to get into, then the gap can change quite quickly. Chris, John, you met the manager for the first time last week. How could those conversations go, and what did you you know, lay out to him as your vision for Rangers? I was very impressed with the manager. Um, I, I've met him a wee bit socially, but not properly. We had quite a long talk myself and George Latham, and uh, very impressive. Uh, the long and short of it is, I, I don't talk about the football itself much as I want to. Um, the manager's in charge. We're, we're here to operate the business. The manager's supported to operate uh, the training academy, the football club side of things. We'll never interfere in that. The one thing I will say to you guys is the manager's been kind of put forward as a spokesperson for the club, which has put him under kind of undue pressure at times because it's an area of the business that it's not his. And hopefully I'll pick up some of that or someone else will. But the manager is uh, the manager's very impressive. There have been some perhaps dissenting voices amongst the support about performances and results so far this season. Does he still have full backing of as a member of the board? Absolutely, yeah, definitely.
the famous last words of a chairman. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, you did the, the, go back to John's words, that's the chief executive role. I mean, John spoke about somebody who's a bit of football now, so he's letting go out in that department. Could you go out with football for, for the new person, maybe to, to a different sport or something like that? It's a great question, and I think it, it needs to be exceptional. It needs to be someone exceptional. Um, you know how when you're recruiting, you're looking at, say, four or five must-haves, you know, uh, and that that's not really a must-have, but it's pretty close. And uh, But if someone exceptional appeared, um, I think if he didn't have an interest in football or an understanding of football, it'd be a bit like me asking to be the chief of a technology company, you know. Um, it's difficult. The knowledge of the product and the business, it's kind of difficult, but if an exceptional candidate would. What kind of price field do you have in that just now, do you know? Yeah, we're well on. We're, we're, we, there were quite a number of people around it that we can pick up with again, and uh, we're, we're moving quickly on it. Yeah, just that's fine. Like, with, with regards to the chairman coming in, would you see somebody maybe who's independent of the existing people on the board who would come in as kind of non-executive director type role? Yeah, I don't see that as being an issue for the board. I'm speaking for them a little bit, um, but no, non-executive chairman going forward. Once we get a proper CEO in place, that's possible. What are those? Four or five must-haves that you mentioned. Bring that oh, goodness, I, I wish I'd never said that now. But <laughs> um, well, you need to have a strong business uh, acumen, knowledge, experience. Uh, you need to have run businesses where there's pressure and they need to deliver. Uh, it can't really be a comfortable business because the stress and the pressure of being the CEO of a football club is pretty big. Um, you need to have a great communication. You need to be a good communicator and good at you know getting to people. Um, I need to have a tremendous work ethic because it goes without saying it, it's unbelievably difficult. It really is. And okay. last, you need to be a good person, somebody good, somebody decent people. I like decent people. Sorry. Sorry. What did Dave say? Well, that's, that's, not, that's not true. We've got professional people that will be announced as consultants and we'll go through a proper recruitment process. It's, that's, that's, I don't, I've no idea what he's referring to when he says that. Where, where are you with, uh, with the Copeland stand and, and how much do you think being back at House Ops will help bring back a little bit of feel good factor? Well, I think, it'd be, I think it'd be huge. But winning in the pitch always does everything. But it, it, it's been a real tough time. Uh, I have to thank, in case I forget, I have to thank uh, Mike Mulroney and Neil Doncaster at the SFA and the SPFL for helping us uh, and allowing us to play at Hamden and because uh, that was a big thing for us. There's nobody else big enough for us. So, But this is home and we're back home, so it's phenomenal a difference. Where are you, where are you with, uh, with the Copeland and how you Sorry? Where are you with the Copeland stand and how you look at It's Copeland? imminent, really hopeful, but we've got to be respectful of uh, local authority approval, etc. Fire and insurances and things, it's all the little things now. Structurally, we're pretty much there. Peter? There's a lot of chat, John, about people kind of know why you wouldn't welcome the first time back. Would you say why you don't think the first time would be welcome back? That's another great question. Um, again, it's not really for me to say I'm just the interim chairman, but if you look at what's been said and, and what the guys are saying, is there's a shareholding structure to the business. Uh, there's a projection, plans, Dave was chairman, Dave Stormage, an investor, and, and can attend the AGM and ask questions, but th th there's just no uh, appetite for it at the moment because one being as, as Dave was here before and he stepped away, other people stepped up, Douglas stepped up, Douglas stepped down and John stepped in, so there's just no appetite. Yes. You know, personally, yes, he inspired a bit of confidence. He's a very, very intelligent man and knows, knows exactly what he's trying to do and what he's trying to do for the club, so yeah. Last case, we'll do Tom, we'll do Adam, we'll do Steve. Thank you. Just, just a two-parter. Um, given everything that Dave Tinga said, do you think it would be helpful for Rangers if he just went quiet now for a while? And secondly, talk to Scottish rugby, talk to the RNA who recently appointed chief executive, and they say it was really really hard to get a good one. Um, has yeah. that, is, that, is that evidence that you found too? Yeah, in terms of Dave? 
No, in ter- no, no. In, ter- in terms of Dave, did you wish he just kind of <laughs> shut up, basically? Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> uh, well, you know, has any other? I'm trying to think. Has any director or any person at the club said anything about Dave? No. Have they responded publicly to enter a nego? No. Have I? Will I ever see in Barry with Dave? No. Um, so in answer to your question, do I wish he would stop? Yes. Yes. I just said, Dave, you know, please, you know, take it below, take it below the radar. Really behave like a, a proper three-year-old. Don't, don't, don't do what you're doing. But it's, it's just a shame, you know, because he's uh, he's a great character and he's a massive influence in the club at the time, and uh, I'll always respect that. And just the second part of the Scottish rugby and the RNA, I found it really, really hard to get a. Yeah. Top CEO. Yeah. They, they say there are not many out there. Is that, is that what you're finding too? Well, this is Rangers Football Club, and with respect to the other sports, it's a dominant sport in the country and much more attractive. Um, as a golfer, certainly not a rugby player, but as a golfer, I accept that. Um, so, no, we would expect to attract a top level candidate. Final question, Adam. So, in this, there's obviously not a lot of change. Is there any other plans for the football board to look at sporting director Brenton, or still focus on the chief executive? Well, uh, yeah, the full focus on the chief executive because in turn, if we bring in people, we'd really like to think that he'd be part of that. We've also got a very competent executive team there, heading up commercial, marketing, uh, finance, um, stadium, whatever. We've got a very competent team of guys and uh, girls there, well, modern technology, sorry, people um, people there. And, uh, you know, no, we, we'll be fine. These, but it's unfortunately, they're not connected. You know, sometimes you think, oh, they're not connected, it's just like people get head hunted and move on and so on. So yeah, we're in a strong place. Okay, thanks very much everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks guys. <laughs>